God is good and all the time. I invite the delegates to take your seats so we can begin this morning. And as you take your seat, I want you to take a moment to breathe and silence your spirit, prepare your soul as we continue on in our session this morning. I am Dolores Williamston, Bishop of the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. And I am black African-American clergywoman living and rejoicing in this season of my life. The team behind me is Bishop David Bard and Bishop Sue Hopper Johnson. I am here to serve the Lord for however long I can, to do whatever I can, to provide all the hope that I can. Amen. I'm also here to serve Jesus Christ and to serve as your chair this morning as we move through this holy ministry of holy conferencing. So let us pause for a word of prayer before we begin. Lord, we've come this far by faith, leaning on you, Lord, trusting in your hope, Lord, for a brighter future. Lord, you have not failed us yet. And so, Lord, we cannot turn around. We've come too far by faith. Almighty God, we give you praise and honor this day we thank you for all you have provided to sustain us. We ask, oh God, that you lead us and guide us as we continue on our journey, first as your disciples and as those who live out their faith in the United Methodist Church. Lord, there are many things on our minds, concerns that have been left at home that just may distract us. So Lord, help us know that you are with those who are far from us whom we dearly love. Remind us that you are with them and you are with us. And Lord, as this day carries on, open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hear and see each other. Remind us today that you are always ever present and watching. And you know the intention of all hearts. Remind us that there is a river of joy, a river of love, peace, and hope that makes glad your city, your holy place, where you, the Most High, dwell. And Lord, send your Holy Spirit to empower us to do ministry today. Remind us of the many voices and languages among us. Remind us most of all that by your Spirit, we are one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry around the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, let us all say, Amen. Amen. At this time, the, the sixth plenary session of the postponed 2020 General Conference is called to order. At this time, the chair invites Reverend Giovanni Arrero General Secretary of the Commission on Religion and Race, and Ms. Don Wiggins Hare, General Secretary of the Commission on the Status and Role of Women, to provide a monitoring report. Buenos dias, pueblo de Dios. Good morning, friends. General Secretary Giovanni Arroyo, Baltimore Washington Conference, Latinx clergyman, adult. General Secretary Don Wiggins Hare, Alabama West Florida Annual Conference, laywoman, white older adult. We trust that you have honored personal boundaries and taken time to rest and truly practice Sabbath. We continue to receive good reports of relationship building in the committees, which led to trust and facilitate holy conferencing. It is our prayer that this pattern will continue as we move 14 committees into one legislative body this week. 
We are transitioning into the final week of General Conference with plenary each day interspersed with celebrations like this morning and opportunities such as the upcoming elections where members of the University Senate, the Judicial Council, representatives to the boards and agencies, including the General Council on Finance and Administration, will be determined. Delegates, we all have opportunities this week to practice inclusion and equity with our nominations and with our votes. The General Conference has those opportunities. The Council of Bishops has those opportunities. The general agencies have those opportunities. We all do. And we must continually challenge ourselves to do better. In the words of the great theologian, Dolly Parton, <laughs> once we know better, we need to do better. Some issues were raised about one of our plenaries on Saturday and those issues are being addressed. I will provide a report on how those concerns were addressed. One of the seminal tests of how we as a church value inclusion lies in the examination of power and our further inquiry into whether we are sharing that power and policy making across the church in an equitable manner. So what are the questions each of us should ask? to determine if we are following Dolly's advice and truly doing our best. So here are a few suggestions. Are the recommendations in the Book of Discipline on gender diversity, ethnic diversity, and laity and clergy ratios to guide the selection of persons we nominate and persons we elect? Who is nominated to be at the table? Whose voice is missing? Ponder on those questions. May the Holy Spirit, que el Espíritu Santo nos llene en este lugar y que nos ayude a nosotros ver las oportunidades. The Holy Spirit fill you uh, the opportunities. The Holy Spirit fill this space and show us the opportunities for equity. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Don and Giovanni. The next item of business is the Committee on Ethics. The chair recognizes Stephanie Henry to present the committee's report. Thank you, Bishop. Good morning, delegates, bishops, visitors, staff, and volunteers. My name is Stephanie Henry, a white laywoman from the Pacific Northwest Conference. I'm in that awkward space where I'm a young adult in the central conferences, but an adult in the US. As a reminder, per our plan of organization, the Committee on Ethics is comprised of the members of the Rules Committee at General Conference. The Ethics Committee received the following report from a staff member of the Office of the Secretary of the General Conference on Saturday night April 27th. The report stated that the Secretary's Office had received an official complaint on Friday, April 26th, about an alleged violation of Rule 12 and several paragraphs of the Book of Discipline. The complaint named an individual who is active in leadership of the Global Methodist Church and actively maintains his membership in the United Methodist Church. The complaint questioned the legal and ethical nature of this behavior per our rule that states, a spirit of Christian conferencing is expected. The Office of the Secretary of the General Conference investigated the complaint. First review found no direct violation of the current rules as stated in the plan of organization and rules of order. Per our plan of organization, the scope of the Ethics Committee is limited to alleged rule violations. If one believes behavior violates the Book of Discipline, the process to bring a chargeable offense is separate, and information can be found in the Book of Discipline, paragraph 2702. The majority of the Ethics Committee agrees that no explicitly stated rule has been violated. Yet, 
We find the actions of this individual and others in a similar situation to be highly unethical. To use a sports analogy, not to trivialize the situation, but to hopefully provide some clarity, you may support more than one team of the same sport. You may even coach one team and support another team. It is wrong, though, to coach one team and actively try to leech or steal players from another team that you claim to support. Hold your applause, please. If you are here at General Conference to actively dismantle, divide, or build mistrust in the United Methodist Church, to use Bishop Bickerton's words, you might just be in the wrong place. Bishop, the Ethics Committee has no recommendation for action at this time. This report is for information only. Thank you. Okay, please hold your applause. No applause. Um, Thank you. We have heard uh, the report, and no action is required by the General Conference. The next item of business is some of our administrative committee reports. The first committee report will be presented by the Committee on Agenda and Calendar. Thank you, Bishop. I am Emily Allen, Metho Nerd. The schedule for today is printed on page 2102 in today's DCA, that's page 2102. The Committee on Agenda and Calendar recommends the following changes for the remainder of today. Following my report, we will hear from the Journal Committee and the Committee on Presiding Officers. Because today is the last day to receive a report from the Committee on Courtesies and Privileges, we have moved that item to 6 p.m. today in order to give time for any further requests to be made. Following the morning administrative committee reports, we will move into continuing nominations. The second afternoon plenary will bring us the West Path New Retirement Plan Overview before continuing with the Abundant Health Initiative report. Bishop, I move the adoption of today's agenda with the changes I have described. It is moved to adopt the agenda with the changes as described. In a moment, we will open the pool so that if you wish to speak, you may register. The question is on the adoption of the motion to adopt the agenda with the changes as described. Are you ready to vote? Just a second. Okay, we have a speaker at microphone one. Um, Orlando Voice. Liberia. I'm Orlando Boyce, lay delegate, Liberia Annual Conference. Bishop, I have queries when it comes to the agenda. On the first line of the agenda, 6.30 to 8 a.m. is breakfast. And then the committee's report follow at 6.30. I'm a little bit confused as to how we will be having breakfast and at the same time with the committee be reporting. More besides that, my second point has to do with the service on lament, confection, and hope. 
can I get a clarity on what this service is, especially when you talk about confession? I want to know what are we confessing about as a United Methodist Church? Believe in scripture, what have we done wrong? What is confession about? Maybe somebody can clarify that. I don't know what we are confessing about. Thank you. We're trying to provide you some clarity. This committee is not having breakfast at that time. And I can refer the rest of your question on to the committee. Clear, clear that up? Yes, yes, please, clear that up. Absolutely. Thank you for asking for that clarification. The listing at 6.30 a.m. Committee on Agenda and Calendar is our meeting time to prepare the agenda for today and the days to come. That is not the time of our scheduled report to the plenary. Your question about the service of lament, confession, and hope is um, a project of the, or a service put together by the General Commission on the Status and Role of Women I believe in coordination with Discipleship Ministries. It is available at 6.30 for those who are leaving directly from plenary, and at seven o'clock again for those who had dinner in the Crown Ballroom before leaving for the day. Okay, the chair recognizes Manuel Rodriguez, delegate from Angola, for point of order, no, excuse me, point of query or information. Bom dia a todos. Good Manuel morning Rodrigues, to all. all. Manuel Rodriguez Lay, delegate from West Angola. He has a personal pronoun. I just need a clarification about the consent calendar, but I will go back to last Wednesday, the 24th. We have some items that were not, have not been discussed, and I think we programmed that for the next few days. We went through 25th, 27th, and today is Monday, and I don't know if we're still going to touch on this subject, which interests us which is item R01. Thank you. Thank you for that question. I have eight years of experience as agenda chair of my annual conference session, and often people would ask me, has the agenda been finished yet? And I would respond, the agenda is not finished until it has already happened. We have planned each day to bring those calendar items to the floor. Each day, we have not yet gotten to those calendar items. All items recommended by legislative committees for adoption must be brought to the plenary body, and they are planned in our order of business for today. Good morning, I am Susan Brumbaugh, coordinator of the calendar and also proud Metho nerd. We have several consent calendars to vote on today. Hold, hold on. Oh. We, we still need to finish voting on the oh, agenda. Oh, I'm so sorry. We have some persons in the pool. Uh, we have a... Uh, Veronica Mawaba, microphone four, East Congo. You just took her name. Okay, she took her name out. We're going to David Livingston, Great Plains, microphone four. David Livingston, clergy, Great Plains, white male. Bishop, if it's appropriate, I'd like to amend the agenda for today by adding in the four o'clock session a report from the credentialing committee regarding the seating of delegates from central conferences. Okay, so there's an amendment before us. Oh. Need a second. 
Okay, you can speak to it. Speak to it. Um, thinking back to the action we took last week regarding the acknowledgement that we have of the number of people not seated, it seems like it's time that we have a fuller update on uh, those who are absent and uh, what progress has been made on that, and the credentialing committee can give that to us. Is there any further discussion? We will now proceed to vote. The question is on the adoption of the motion to amend by adding at 4 p.m. a report of the question on credentialing. Okay. Those in favor of adopting the amendment, press 1. Those opposed to the amendment, press 2. You may now vote. There's a checkered flag it's over in this section here. Hold them high so they can assist you. We're still assisting those who need a little help with their voting device. I don't see anyone else. We're going to close the vote. Oh, there's a wait. It's too late. It is now closed. So the results, please. Okay, so 655 yes on the adoption of the amendment to the agenda, 68 no. The, firm, the affirmative have it, has it, and the amendment is adopted. There is a point of order, Jerry, excuse me, I'm sorry. Point of information, inquiry. Jerry Akulan, Liberia, microphone one. You need to state your question right away, please. Good morning. I'm Jerry Kula from Liberia. Oh. Uh, my inquiry has to do with the question asked by Orlando Boyce from Liberia. The question, uh, the question, in my opinion, was not adequately answered. And so the question was, uh, this is an agenda for the entire general conference. So if a group has a program that is included, the group name should, name should have been included, and the content and purpose of the um, event clarified so that those who may be interested in coming what, to Sir, what is your question? My question is, can you call the group that is having the service for lament, confession, and hope to clarify to this general conference what is the content and purpose of this program? So those interested, can choose to come since it's happening at the time it is happening and it's a group that is having it. But as it is expressed here, it I, suggests I that it's for all of us. Thank you for adding clarification to the part of the question that has not been answered. We'll, we'll get some clarification on that before the end of the day. 
My, on his question. My understanding is this service was approved by the Commission on General Conference as part of the business for today. My recommendation is that the General Commission on the Status and Role of Women provide information about the content of that service to Gary Graves to include in today's announcements. Thank you. The chair recognizes Jethro Bayomba, South Congo, for an amendment. Thank you, Bishop, for the word. Uh, my name is uh, Jethro Muyombi and not Mayombo. Lei from uh, South Congo Conference. I'm a lawyer. I'm also a national parliament member, or you say here National Congress, and I'm deputy lay leader of my conference. Bishop, I just wanted to ask, uh, first I, I had my point here, I want to say thank you to this committee of calendar because they are doing a great job. So my point is- Excuse uh, me, you were yes. recognized to make an amendment. I need you to do the amendment. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, my amendment is uh, on uh, the calendar of prayer uh, I want to, I was looking where the point of additionally his, but I didn't find it. I want to add a prayer on uh, this point of uh, uh, 10, 20 to, uh, to 12, I think there are different prayer. Uh, my country, Congo, uh, we, are, we have a fight. We pray here for Israel, and you, I want to request to I'm pray for to Congo you. also. I'm going to interrupt list. you. You need to state your amendment. Thank you. I, I, I think I want to stay really in the amendment of the point of calendar. Maybe my word is not clear. I want that we add where there are different prayer to add to pray for my country, Congo. I'm going to invite you to send that to courtesies and privileges. Thank you, Bishop. I will do. Thank you. Okay. okay. The chair calls on Amy Lippold, Great Plains Conference, Mike Four. Thank you, Bishop. Amy Lippold, clergy, Great Plains Annual Conference, white woman, adult. I move to end debate on the motion to adopt the calendar. Is there a second? has been moved and seconded that date debate be closed. This motion is not debatable in accordance with the rule 7.3. The chair informs the delegates that there, there are the following individuals currently in the pool. There are three individuals in the pool. There is a speech for. There's a speech in favor. Zero people in this, excuse me, people with speeches against, zero people proposing amendments. This motion requires a two thirds vote. We will now proceed to vote. The question is on closing the debate. Are you ready to vote? Vote yes to end. Press number one, two, no. You may vote now. There's one checkered flag. <laughs> Voting is now closed. 
May we, have, may we have the results of the vote. There are 686 yes, 51 no. The motion passes to close. The debate is closed. We will now proceed to vote. The motion requires a majority the question is on the adoption of the agenda with the changes as described. Again, the, the motion is, requires a majority vote. The question is on the adoption of the agenda with the changes as described. Those in favor, press one. Those opposed, press two. Voting is open now. There is one checkered flag in the back. Voting is now closed. May we have the results of the vote? There are 698 in the affirmative, yes, and 34 in the negative. The agenda is adopted. Thank you very much. Okay. So again, I'm Susan Brumbaugh, and we have several consent calendars to vote on today. The first one is consent calendar A03 in yesterday's DCA on page 2084. A03 begins on page 2084. Two items were removed. Calendar item 35 was missing part of the committee's recommended amendment and a corrected version was published in today's DCA. That's Calendar item 35 was removed. Calendar item 76 was removed from the consent calendar by request of 20 delegates. Calendar item 76, and that item appears at the very end of today's DCA. Bishop, I move that we accept the actions of consent calendar A03, except for the items that were removed. The question is on the adoption of the consent calendar A03, except for the items that were removed. Please get your voting devices. We will now proceed to vote. This motion requires a majority vote. The question is on the adoption of the consent calendar, A03, except for the items that were removed. Those in favor, press one. Those opposed, press two. You may vote now. Voting is now closed. May we have the res results of the vote? There are 663 yes and 60 no. The consent calendar is approved except for the items that were removed. Our second consent calendar is B03 on page 2090. B03, page 2090. No items have been removed from this consent calendar and it is correct as printed. 
Bishop, I move that we accept the actions on consent calendar B03. This motion re requires a majority vote. The question is on the adoption of the consent calendar B03. I'll repeat that. The question is on the adoption of the consent calendar B03. Those in favor, press one. Those Those opposed, press two. You may vote now. Voting is now closed. May we have the results of the vote. There are 663 in the affirmative and 55 in the negative. The affirmation has it and the motion is adopted. Consent calendar B03 is approved. Our final consent calendar for today is C03 on page 2,098. C03 is on page 2,098. Item 230 was removed, not by request, but because it contained an invalid action. The committee's action was to refer to another legislative committee rather than to refer to a board or agency. That petition was acted on by another committee and appears on consent calendar A04 in today's DCA as calendar item 298. So item 230 is removed. It should not appear on the consent calendar we are about to vote on. Bishop, I move that we accept the actions on consent calendar C03 except for the item that was removed. The question is on the adoption of the consent calendar C03, except for the item that has been removed. Please get your voting device. We will now proceed to vote. This motion requires a majority vote. The question is on the adoption of the consent calendar C03 except for the item that has been removed. You may vote now. Those in favor, press one. Those opposed, press two. Voting is closed. May we see the results? There are 674 in the affirmative, 56 in the negative. The affirmative has it and the motion is adopted. Consent calendar C03 is approved. So now we're going to move to today's DCA, and I want to offer some guidance on all the things that were printed. 
The committees did a lot of work. There's, I, you may notice that there is a DCA deadline in every day, and so items that were received in my office after that deadline will appear in tomorrow's DCA. So if there's something you were expecting to see and it's not in today's DCA, don't panic. It will probably be there tomorrow. So I want to guide you through a couple of new sections. If you will turn to page 2,129, that's 2,129, you will see a list of petitions that each legislative committee voted not to support. There's one section organized by committee and a second section organized by petition number. You can request to have an, a petition in this list presented to the plenary by getting 20 delegates to sign a form called Request to Bring a Non-Calendared Item to the Floor. Very clear, right? You'll pick that up in room 103 and forms must be returned by 3 o'clock today to the same room. And I'm going to repeat that again because it's, it's new. When a committee votes not to support a petition, it gets printed in this list and it can be um, brought to the floor and it becomes a calendar item in the next day's DCA and then it would be available for discussion by the body. There's also, if you will turn back to page 2,123, it's 2,123, you will see a list of petitions that were rejected in favor of another petition that the Legislative Committee took action on. So again, those are rejected in favor of. According to Rule 34, these items cannot be presented to the plenary. So if you see an item in that section, you should not try to fill out a form. And then we do have our consent cal calendars that appear after all of that, and they start on page 2,155. And there are three consent calendars with a lot of items on them. If you want to remove an item from a consent calendar, you can go to room 103 and ask for a form to remove a, an item from a consent calendar. The staff there can guide you. You get 20 signatures on that form and return it to the same room, room 103, by 3 o'clock today. So there are two potential forms to fill out. One is to remove an item from the consent calendar, and the other is to bring an item to the plenary. And that concludes our report. Thank you, Emily and Susan. The next administrative committee report is the committee on journal. On journal report, the chair recognizes the chair of the committee on journal, Rachel, Rachel Boots Miller. Thank you, Bishop. I'm Rachel Miller, an ordained deacon from the great state of Ohio. <laughs> and I am blessed to be living out the mission of caring for those who serve in my appointment at Westpath in the church relations team. And once again today, I bring the report on the committee on the journal. If you've not checked out the DCA website at dailychristianadvocate.org or you've experienced some challenges in logging in, please see our friends at the IT help desk that should be in the back of our plenary space and they are happy to help you navigate that. In the DCA volume 5, number 6 for today, on page 2119, you will find the corrections to the Commission on the General Conference nominations. This concludes our report for this morning, and I thank you for the time, Bishop. Thank you, Rachel.
We have a, a point of inf information or query from Robert Amundsen, microphone three, excuse me, five, Redbird Mission in, uh, I, where are you? I'm over here, Bishop, good morning. Robert okay. Amundsen, Central Appalachian, formerly Redbird Missionary Conference. Clergy, white, they say adult, but young at heart. Um, I tried to get in before the last report. Um, in the consent calendar, item number 290, um, I mentioned this in our committee. Um, there was a printing error. Um, it makes reference to paragraph 1311 in the Book of Discipline, and if you're a discipline nerd like myself, you like appropriate things. Um, that should be paragraph 1311.1. Well, you, you had a question? No, I had a point of information. Okay. It should be paragraph 1311.1, not point 11. It was also in error in the ADCA. Okay. So I just wanted to make that correction. Okay, we'll point you to Susan. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Jerry Kwan has a point of information. Uh, microphone five, California, Nevada. Bishop Jeffrey Kwan, Asian American, male, older adult. And what is your question? My question is, on the non-calendared items that are non, not supported, will there be further action that the plenary will, be, uh, will need to take? Susan Bramba. No further action by the plenary unless someone submits a form to bring that item to the plenary floor. So that is one of the forms I talked about. If we receive a form for an item by three o'clock today with 20 valid signatures, that item will print in tomorrow's DCA and it would be available for discussion by the plenary. If I do not get a form by three o'clock today, those items will not be considered by the plenary. I hope that is helpful. Okay, thank you. The next report is a report on the Committee on Presiding Officers. The chair recognizes the chair of the committee, Jasmine Smothers, and Vice Chair Olden Wested to present their report. Good morning. Okay, that's Monday. We'll do better tomorrow. I'm Jasmine Rose Smothers, adult female African American clergy delegate from the North Georgia Conference in the United States. My pronouns are she, her. Auden Westad and I lead the committee on presiding officers. Good morning, General Conference. My name is Uden Vesta, and I'm the lay delegate for Norway Annual Conference. Our team of 12 people represent each central conference in each U.S. jurisdiction. For those who are joining us for the first time this week, the Committee on Presiding Officers is tasked with selecting and notifying the presiding officer, officers for each plenary session. Today, we've made an adjustment to the presiding order. We welcome Bishop Dolores Williamson to the chair, and we will also welcome Bishop Sandra Steiner-Ball, Bishop Monde Mayumbo, and Bishop Frank Beard. Tomorrow, we will welcome Bishop Lynette Planbeck, Bishop Christian Alstead from the Northern Europe Central Conference, Bishop David Bard, and Bishop Gregory Von Palmer. As a reminder, please speak slowly, concisely, into the microphone and try to avoid idiomatic expressions. In doing so, you will help our presiders and translator, translators make this plenary session more accessible for all God's children. Thank you for your cooperation with our presiding officers, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Thank you, Jasmine and Olden. Delegates and friends, we have reached the time for a break. So we will take a recess until 10.20 a.m. We're gonna stay on schedule this morning. Uh, when we resume, uh, Bishop Sandra Steiner Ball will be in the chair. And I wanna thank, uh, thank you all, thank my triad, and thank our, uh, the whole team up here. And so thank you for this opportunity. It has been an absolute pleasure, amen? amen. As we continue to serve the Lord, go for a break. Be back at 10.20. <laughs>